Hi everyone, Mike here, K at MRD Radio Stuff. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. If this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You can also hit the bell so you're notified when I make new videos. Thank you! Uh, today I want to revisit the Pac-10 Mini. Uh, we tried it last time with the 7300 and the internal tuner and well it didn't go as well as I wanted to because of the internal tuner so uh, George from Pac-10 and I emailed back and forth and he gave me a bit of insight so I want to read that uh, email to you and kind of explain uh, really how this antenna was designed and is supposed to work and uh, we brought the 7300 out again today I'm at Island Lake State Recreation Area and uh, we're gonna try and activate it again with the Pac-10 Mini and the 7300. So here's the email from George uh, from Pac-10. Said he wants to give you, a, I want to give you a little more info on the antenna to fill in a few topics. The random wire nine to one type of antenna needs a full range 10 to one tuner to handle all bands. It may work with a three to one tuner like most radios have built in, but it will be a subset of the bands. By the way, the 7300 does have a tuner capable of 10 to one, but in reduced output power to 50 watts, which is reasonable. The length of the wire is important. You mentioned uh, that you might cut it to be on a particular band. This is generally a bad idea. Why? Let's say you cut it to be a quarter wave length on 40 meters, 33 feet, right? The feed point impedance will be low and the nine to one will make it high uh, and the tuner will compensate to bring it back down, which is somewhat inefficient. If you're gonna cut it for 33 feet, you should just use a wire and no nine to one, plus add a quarter wave uh, 33 foot radials and you have a resonant ground plane on 40 meters. Makes sense. The other problem with this approach is that while this will work great on 40 meters, it'll be the worst possible length for 20 meters. <laughs> Why? Because 33 feet is a half wave on 20 meters. The feed point impedance of a half wave is way there around 3,000 to 5,000 ohms, requiring a matching transformer that is 50 to 1, not 9 to 1. Assuming you want to use a single wire on all bands, the secret to success is to use the 9 to 1 and a wire length that is not a half wavelength on any band you operate on. If you calculate the length of all ham bands looking for multiples of half wave, it turns out the following lengths are never a half wave multiple. 29 feet, 35 and a half, 41 feet, 58 feet, 71 feet. Use one of these and you're good on all bands. So which is best? The longer the better to some extent. Put up the longest one that is convenient. As for the counterpoise wires, sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't, depending on the length of the feed line and the amount of power. Uh, if you're running a very short coax, then counterpoise wires help. If you have 25 feet or more coax, less so. The outer skin of the coax's shield forms the counterpoise in the absence of the plug-in wires. That may work just fine. If you run more power, 20, 50 or more, uh, you increase the chances of getting high common mode currents flowing back down the coax to the rig causing RFI. The best way to deal with that is to put a choke in the midpoint of the coax. For example, run 25 feet to a choke and another 25 feet uh, to the feed point. The choke will keep the current between the antenna and the choke and removing most of it from arriving at the radio. So there you go. Hope that uh, clarifies some things. Don't cut it. <laughs> Leave it the way it is. George knows what he's doing. So I'm gonna set the antenna back up. We're gonna put the uh, 7300 in emergency mode. I'll show you how to do that. It's stupid easy and uh, we'll get on the air. Okay, so we've got our giant telescoping mast uh, that we're gonna hook this up to. So that's the very top. It comes with this carabiner here. And I'm just gonna snap it to the twine that I have on here and raise it up. So here it is set up on the mast. It's only uh, a couple feet off the ground. So its total length is about 40 feet. And then I got, oh, 20 some odd feet of coax going back to the bench there. Okay, so how do we get into emergency mode? Really simple, we're gonna hit menu. We're gonna go to set, uh, all the way at the bottom here to others. We're gonna hit emergency, tuner, read all that crap. Hit OK, and then you hit Restart to Set. Now we're in emergency mode. You see the E up there at the top. So the first thing I want to see is if it's going to tune 40 meters, because that was the main problem last time. So let's see. 
Oh, that's a good sound. That's tuned. That's wonderful. All right, so I just plugged in three counterpoise wires that are, I think they're probably 13, 15 feet, something like that. Tune it again. Now see it says E-tune. That means it's tuned. Check out our SWR now. Nothing. So let's go to power. Putting out about 45 watts. So it works. So let's test some other bands now. Let's go to 20 meters. Just go, I don't know, somewhere around the middle of the band here. Tuning. E-tune, that's a good thing. Let's get uh, CW here, see what happens. There's our power. SWR is flat. Let's go to 18 megahertz. That's tuned. A little bit of SWR peaking up there, but nothing really to worry about. Closer to 50 watts there, 21 megahertz. Tuning, E-tune, that's good. Power is good. SWR is flat, 24 megahertz. That's good. A little bit of SWR, close to 50 watts, 28 megahertz. Tuning, the tuning song. Close to 50 watts, a couple of bars on the SWR, and finally six meters. Let's see what happens. Tuned, little SWR, and about 45 watts there. And that, my friends, is a happy antenna. So here's how I have the counterpoise wires going. I made this little pigtail to go inside your little ground connections here. There's a little socket there. And I use this, uh, this is just more of that really thin wire that makes up this antenna. And I use this counterpoise for a couple other antennas, so I obviously put power poles on it. What else would you do? And uh, we just power pull it together, and then they're going out in three different directions, and that makes it work. CQ Poda, CQ Poda from Kilo 3315 Island Lake State Rec Area calling CQ Poda, CQ Poda, and standing by. Kilo, Kilo 4, Delta, India, Victor. KK4 DIV, what's going on, Bob? How are you? All right, Mike, I think I heard you come back to me there. <laughs> I sure did. So that's cool. We got Bob, KK4DIV. Go check out his YouTube channel. Thanks, Bob. November Hotel 7 Whiskey Bravo. I've got you a 5.5 five into Kilo 3315. November 5, Papa Bravo Papa. November 5, Papa Bravo Papa. You are 5.7, five 5.7 seven, five seven into Kilo 3315. Roger, you are a 5.5 five five here into San Antonio, Texas. Well, all right, guys, that is what I call a success. We got the Pac-10 Mini working on the 7300. Uh, got uh, 11 contacts today. The bands were not doing the greatest, but uh, we made it work. So I'm happy I can take this antenna out. It's super easy to set up, by far the easiest antenna that I have to set up uh, for sure. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again on another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff.